Hi, my name is James Clem. I often get emails on this one topic. I love Emacs and so do a lot of my colleagues. Are you finding that Emacs is working well for you? I love it as a restoration. I have security. I sleep more at night, meaning that I have a larger joy factor in my life, less anxiety. I've been doing all ceramic dentistry for years, mainly because my client base demands it. Having Emacs has been a game changer for my practice in many ways, but it's been a game changer for me. Has it been a game changer for you? My game changer is this. I know it's not going to break. <laughs> Think of what that does for your office and your client base, particularly if you look at the latest studies, even out 10 years with Emacs, we're seeing a 98.4 survival rate. Actually, hmm, that's about as good as anything I've ever seen in dentistry. Talking about a new gold standard, and we can effectively do this every day in our practice. One of the comments I get is proximal contacts open up after you fire it. That should not be happening. The percentage of any type of dimensional shifts through the firing crystallization phase should not be significant or where we would notice that unless several things aren't happening. So let's review three points to make sure we don't see that happening. Number one, when I mill my restorations, I wanna make sure that they fit snug and approximately, meaning they still go down, but they have a nice firm fit. How do we make that happen? Well, it starts with the way we prepare our teeth. If you've heard me lecture, or if you've heard some of my other webcast and videos, I'm really big on this one principle, preparing the clinical theater for optimal outcome. What that will do is make an average situation exceptional, <laughs> which we know we need in the clinical theater. When I prepare my tooth, there's an optical draw. That's how the crown is going to fit in. It will make a difference on how we design it in the serrate. As important, as the prep are the proximal surfaces next door. Particularly if I'm treating one tooth and we have a mesial and a distal contact. I'm going to look at those opposing contacts and make sure that they're the proper size. We know that proximal contacts become larger as we go more posteriorly in the mouth. And I want to make sure that they have the same optical path and physical path of draw as my preparation. That's a, that's a really important critical factor here. I often prepare the adjacent teeth, or refine them would be a better word, as I do my preparation. Just keep that in mind. That's how we see these restorations drop in. So a critical point here, you want to avoid point contacts in your proximal zones and the way you provide that environment when you're in your virtual design is how you prepare your, your proximal contacts before you ever take your optical impression. Another thing that I'm doing with my optical impressions to enhance my proximal contacts is I lightly pitch to gain the undercut data of the interproximal zones next to the prep. Don't pitch more than five or seven degrees. You don't want to lose a margin anywhere when you're pitching that could interfere with your final virtual die. Having better interproximal contact zones, particularly with the undercut there, will provide a better visual and better proposal of proximal contact, particularly in the posterior zone. Point number two to optimize my interproximal contacts with Emacs. I'm finishing my proximal contact parameters in solid green. That's plus 25. I have found that works on multiple machines in multiple circumstances. A lot of our parameters are impacted by how we place our reflective medium. Right now for the blue cam, I'm using plus two five. When I seat that restoration in the blue state, you wanna optimize your sprue location on a non-contact zone if possible. I almost have to pop it down, but yet it seats all the way. I know that with that experience, my contacts are not gonna to be too light. 
Number three on optimizing your interproximal contacts with Emacs is when you are firing your Emacs, you have to prepare it for firing. I don't overpolish the proximal contacts. I mainly rely on glaze to finish those areas. Make sure the restoration is totally filled with object fix. I like the object fix flow. It's like smooth ice cream. You backfill the restoration, you place your firing pin in the restoration, which kind of squeezes it out to the margins. Doesn't have to be pretty on the firing pin, but as long as your margins are supported and all the internal components of your restoration are supported with the object fix, that provides a better firing and dimensional stability during that crystallization phase. Crystallization almost gets to the fusing point of the ceramic, so you have to remember that. You don't want dimensional shifts there. Make sure you're using a die pen and make sure that it's in the center of the funnel of your furnace. All these little things have an impact on the quality and the dimensional predictability of our final restorations. Using those three points, in other words, preparing your adjacent teeth, optimizing the size of the contact, Particularly with 4.0, we can lightly pitch the camera, that's front to back, gaining access to the undercuts of the proximal contacts, providing better virtual proposals and finishing, and then managing our CEREC afterwards during the crystallization phase will provide contacts that don't change dimensionally on you. Hope this helps you. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your CEREC. Enjoy Emacs. What a marriage. Never has been better in my clinical theater. Having your dimensional projections down, in other words, being able to predict the fact that your restorations are going to drop in, margins closed, occlusion right on, and proximal contacts right on, so we're not having to adjust these restorations, provides efficiency, happiness within your office team and the patient you're treating. And that's what dentistry is all about. That's why I'm such a devout CEREC user, because it provides predictability and satisfies my expectations. We want to have that option for you as well, and that's why I make these videos and that's why I teach, because that's what gives me a lot of satisfaction. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.